chat? Yeah. Do yeah. you want me to and go through on... them, John, just to kind of ask them so we can stay on point? Yeah, it's up to you, Krista, however you want to facilitate it. Okay, perfect. Um, so the first one was, um, so the first one has to do actually homeowners, uh, homeowner associations and so forth. And what's uh, kind of funny is that we've been talking about that quite a bit um, within Smart Coast. And for those wondering, yes, we are going to be creating something with HOAs. It's going to be um, like a, an ad hoc committee or something of that nature. And so we will be, we want to hear from HOAs. We want to engage with HOAs. So please contact us. I believe Joe put his information in the chat. Um, shoot us an email. We are more than happy to set up a call. Let's chat. Let's, let's get stuff rolling because this is super important. Um, next question, Don, how favorable was the Coastal Commission to the San Diego Reef Falls? They proved it. Um, I don't, uh, uh, I did not uh, closely monitor uh, that hearing, uh, but it is approved. It is going forward. Uh, you know, we have, uh, we're doing a lot of work, Smart Coast uh, in general, and in this firm in particular on these different issues. So we try to be judicious in regards to what it is uh, that we are monitoring. Uh, so we did not monitor that actual hearing, but it is approved and moving forward. So that means at least seven out of 12 uh, were, uh, uh, were in favor of it. And are there any conflicts between artificial reefs and the marinas, the shipping lanes? And even more importantly, I believe that question, uh, uh, there's another question talking about surfing. So, but with your permission, Chris, I'll, I'll sort of uh, mash those two together. Yes. There can be. Now, um, uh, reef conflicts with shipping lanes, no. Uh, uh, any, any tanker that's uh, gonna run into a, a reef is, is uh, already run aground. They're in the shallower areas, just uh, uh, typically uh, beyond where the, uh, the waves start to break. You want to, to push it out there. So they have to be in the sweet spot. The reef has to be built up enough to where it's below the surface all the time or 99% of the time. So it's not sticking up like a breakwater, but at the same time, close enough to where it is, is that's where the waves need to break. Now, could there be conflicts with uh, some fishermen? Uh, well, uh, yes. By the way, huge swaths of the, the state of California is, is within a uh, marine protected uh, areas. And I would point out that the reefs have been phenomenal uh, uh, as uh, habitat enhancement. In fact, the main reefs that have been built in California, in truly uh, not, not inside a bay like in San Diego, but there was uh, a reef fall reef that was built off of San Onofre nuclear power plant uh, because their mitigation measures were failing to enhance the wildlife down there. And there was reefs that the Coastal Commission also approved off the Palos Verdes Peninsula as mitigation for that horrible DDT plume that is down there. So, um, and then the last one that's politically hugely important is conflicts with the surfing community and will it ruin the surf break? Uh, because probably one of the most powerful uh, NGOs in front of the Coastal Commission is the Surfrider Foundation. So we're going to have to be very, very careful and cognizant of their concerns in regards to that. But you remember the slides I showed you down there at Narrow Neck in, in Australia? That served two purposes. One was to protect the beach from erosion, but the second purpose was to improve the surfing condition. If you design the reefs correctly, you focus the, the okay, I'm, I'm gonna start getting off cowabunga, I'm not gonna do that, but you improve the peel of the wave and the point break, and there's tremendous precedent. The surfing community understands this, they're very, very jumpy about it, but they understand it in principle. There was a, uh, an oil wharf down in Ventura that uh, when the uh, oil companies were pulling their uh, facilities out of there, they wanted to demolish the wharf. They didn't need it anymore, it was a big old wharf. And the surfing community lost their mind about it because that, that wharf, that giant pier, created the perfect uh, way of coming in off, uh, it essentially created a point. And I, I must say, when they tore out the, the wharf, the sandbar went away and the surfing conditions were degraded. All that being said, the bottom line is, is that the reefs can, in actuality, enhance the surfing experience. 
Great. And I think you touched on the on the question or the answer, I should say, of what the viable conditions or the necessary conditions to make the reefs viable. But as you said, it has to be kind of right at that breaking point, out far enough, but not too far. So that's that's great. Thank you. Um, I think we had one more question in that, and this one I think is going to be where we don't have a specific answer, but close to it is what degree does Smart Coast and local jurisdictions feel that frontline property owners on threatened beachfronts should participate in the fiscal responsibility of protecting their property? Well, I believe that that is uh, not something that has been deliberated upon by the board. And I'm uh, not going to get out in front of the board in regards to that very important question. I certainly have my own thoughts about that and will be advising the board uh, uh, accordingly. Uh, but that has not been something I think the board has deliberated on or took a policy decision on. Now that is uh, probably that query was, was probably precipitated by uh, the uh, example I showed of the community seawall exception up there in the county of Santa Cruz, where it is anticipated that the geologic hazard abatement district uh, would be formed, and when you form a GAD, um, uh, it, it, all interested parties pay a, a, a fair share into that. That's pursuant to Prop 219, um, and that is uh, very often a mixture of the private property owners and, and, and public uh, entities that have a financial interest. And I'm certainly comfortable in saying that, that if, if they uh, pursue these things, whether it be community seawalls or offshore reefs with GADs, that would be uh, that would be the way that would be legally structured. And thank you. And um, kind of going back to the artificial reefs, I think this is a very popular popular topic. Um, one I know that we have definitely talked about a lot within Smart Coast. What's the argument against the artificial reefs, and how do you answer that sort of pushback? Uh, fascinating. Um, when uh, we made the presentation in Pismo Beach, there was a, a not to be mentioned, a very prominent environmental attorney who watched the presentation, who contacted uh, a very uh, prominent uh, uh, past elected official up there. Uh, and after watching our presentation said, this reef idea looks fantastic. What's the problem with it? Why isn't this something that is being done up and down the state of California. And he called me and he said, you know, I didn't know what to say to her. So I, I don't want to be a, a consultant uh, who is enamored with his own arguments, but I really do think uh, this is probably uh, one of the most important tools in the toolbox for us to address sea level rise. Uh, arguments that have been made, the only arguments I have seen um, made against artificial reefs uh, for protection of shorelines is the surfers' concerns about this and there was a debate over whether or not on a, a actual beach nourishment coastal development permit uh in in malibu uh they didn't want to do it because they didn't want to upset the apple cart but to date in, in all candor i am yet to hear uh, anybody bring forward a, a valid argument in regards to why these reefs shouldn't be a, a significant investment in the state of california to deal with sea level rise great well, I think that that's all our questions and I know that you have to get going to another meeting. Um, so thank you so much, Don, and I'll turn this back over to Joe. Thank, thank you very much, Don. We really appreciate you being here. And Don, really, really, this is Judy Taylor. Before you leave, could you talk about uh, Jack Ainsworth and Madeline Cavalieri's reaction when you and Krista met with them. I think we need to know that we're getting traction. Okay. First of all, it's really good to see you, Judy. And thanks uh, thanks again for all the help that you've given Smart Coast in general and me in particular. Um, uh, you're, you're really quite the energizer bunny on, on things, and uh, uh, it's, it's essential. I appreciate it. So uh, I would characterize um, the conversations of, and I'm going to be uh, prudently uh, cautious in regards to what I say. I'm not afraid to go on the record. Uh, I'm not sworn to secrecy on anything, but uh, we, the conversations that we're having have been general in nature. Uh, there have been specific policies 
uh, and regulations that we have talked about. Um, but you know, I think that um, your question uh, needs a, needs an answer in regards to uh, one specific aspect of it. Is they sure as heck know that we're here. They understand that Smart Coast is is in fact a very real entity. Um, they're um, uh, I, I read your question. Uh, yeah, they feel it. They are they're a very tight group up and down the state, the Coastal Commission, they've got their allies and their friends in each and every community. Uh, some some uh, local governments are more friendly with than others, but those friends and those uh, uh, those allies are reporting back to them that in, in uh, a number of these coastal communities, they're starting to feel the presence of the GATS in Smart Coast California. Uh, and in fact, uh, they've been reaching out to us. Coastal commissioners have been reaching out to us. Uh, and they being, of course, uh, Madeline and, and Jack. So they know we're here. Uh, they, uh, they know that we can be, uh, and this is something that's coming up, and I'll wrap it up, Marta, because I know that you've got an agenda to move forward here, Joe. I appreciate that. But uh, they, uh, Smart Coast is increasingly uh, being seen as a conduit and a bridge between the local jurisdictions, the counties and the cities, uh, the people in the trenches that live there, not just the elected officials or the planning director, and the bureaucracy, which is the Coastal Commission. Um, so uh, I think that the incredible work that Marta and Chris have, have done and all the endless hours and you've done has, has created an organization whereupon they recognize that whether they agree with us, disagree with us, or somewhere in the middle on, on these individual issues, we're here, we're not going anywhere, uh, and, and they need to uh, make us part of the conversation. Thank you, Don. I appreciate it. Thank you for all the Fabulous questions. Fabulous news. <laughs> all right, guys. I'll go ahead and sign off then. Thank you. Uh, before, right, we go on, before we go on, Steve, do you have a question um, to Smart Coast now? I do, and thank you so much, Joe, for calling on me. You bet. The, the, you know, from the get-go three years ago with local government, you know, I, 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 I kind of stepped on this issue and probably have stepped on a few toes, <clears throat> as I'm kind of known to do, um, and, and plan on continuing to do. Um, my, the biggest issue I've noticed is that the greatest tool that Coastal has is time. And what happens is, as they drag their feet and drag things out and so forth, local coastal people get frustrated and property owners see that their properties get endangered more and more as the sea level rises. Uh, I've gone through it now. This is my third time, my third property I own right on a beach. And I've seen friends lose their properties and lose one guy lost 80 feet of his cliff and basically has no property much left because of it, because Coastal wouldn't give him a seawall, whereas there were seawalls on both sides of his properties. But anyway, that being said, time is of the essence, and right now I own a piece of property where my sea level definition is two feet above sea level, and I'm only protected by a dune that's lost about 40 feet of dune in the last 67 years I've owned it. And it's in a homeowners association where a lot of people aren't immediately threatened, and so most people being, most people don't like the idea of having to dig into their pocket to, uh, to protect themselves in the future from something they don't immediately see. So what happens is the fiscal responsibility of a lot of people is somebody else will take care of it 20 years from now or 50 years from now or whatever. So I'm not prone to want to dig into my pocket to protect the property that, that I own it. And I'm talking particularly about an HOA. That I, that I belong, where I'm in a building that is most immediately at risk, and the other 50 units or 40 units or whatever aren't immediately at risk. So getting that homeowners association to look at it in the long-term feasibility is, is difficult. And uh, at this point, you know, we've created a small group that is looking at, at you know, the, the long-term effects, two or three of which are on this call. And I'm really glad for you and really appreciate what you're doing to show what, what CAR and particularly uh, uh, Smart Coast are doing 
in the big picture of things, but we have an immediate concern that state Senator, um, what's his name, um, John Laird told us in a Zoom call that we are at the tip of the spear in our property. And it's the one that we were gonna have the little march on that unfortunately got canceled. Uh, my concern is the accountability and responsibility of what property owners have to be prepared for to participate in protecting their property and how we go about showing them that they may or will have to dig into their pockets with either assessments or whatever to help local jurisdictions and even the state in paying for this stuff for remediation or protection or else just suffer, you know, the consequences of coastal allowing managed retreat to retreat their properties deep into the sea, which is what's happened to a lot of people like Pacifica, where the poor guy lost his millions of dollars worth of apartments because they wouldn't let him do what had to be done. That's my real concern. Because there's a lot of people out there that have good property, but they just can't afford to protect by themselves. And Coastal will just prevent them from protecting it, even when they do have the money to protect it. So that issue to me is, is really consequential. Um, and, and, you know, being the tip of the spear and coming from John Laird, who's been really involved in this for decades, makes me fearful of those people, even those who are prior to 77, which happens to be our, our, our uh, homeowners association, um, as to our risk factor. And, and I, I'm not on the board, your board, but I'm really behind you guys. I would hope that you start addressing that so that we can make people more aware, particularly people who have got a clue about coastal. A third of our owners live in the Central Valley. They, Coastal Commission hasn't even ever met in this in the coastal valley, in the Central Valley. So there's no media coverage. They don't even know what's going on. Thanks, that's, thanks. That, those are the kind of issues that I think we need to be addressing. Thanks, Thank Steve. You. Thank you very much for your comments. We really and we do appreciate your support. We know that you were uh, instrumental in, in helping us get our almost uh, walked uh, next week and we've, we've, we haven't canceled it, it's been postponed. So, and we'll talk about that more. Thank you very much, Steve, for your comments, appreciate it. Uh, just a couple of things to remind you all, if you do have questions, try to get them into the chat. If it's something that you cannot uh, put into the chat or really feel you wanna bring forward, uh, please raise your hand and I will call on you and, and uh, uh, we'll listen to you. We do have a rest of the presentation to get along with. One of the things that um, I forgot to uh, share at the beginning of this was with the, the participants that we have today, uh, for the first time ever with our stakeholders meeting, we've got more than just realtors that are involved here. We've got private individuals, HOAs, um, all of the folks that are supporting us. And so we thank you all for being here and, and uh, for your participation in this. Marta, shall we go on? So our, our 2021 accomplishments, um, we, we had quite a year um, and, and the, from, from being able to communicate with, with different public entities, uh, individuals, associations, um, you'll see uh, the, the, the different items that were on here on our, on our uh, accomplishments. And what I'd like to start with is our um, adv advocacy work. <clears throat> In 2021, um, you'll see the, the uh, different uh, groups uh, and meetings and presentations that we had. Um, we were out um, introducing the, the state of California to who Smart Coast is. Um, we, were, we were in uh, different meetings throughout the state from Sacramento down to San, San Diego. Uh, and, and people are getting to know and entities and communities are becoming aware of Smart Coast and the value that Smart Coast has for our state. 
Um, on our advocacy on legislation, um, we, we were fortunate enough to, to testify in opposition to AB 500, and we worked very, very hard on SB 627. Um, we were fortunate enough to have the committee chair respond to our request and heard the bill. Um, it was voted down along party lines, but Smart Coast California is very much um, still in the game and believing that the topic of allowance of community seawalls is still important. It's still one of the, the main tools that we have, and we will continue to um, advocate for that. As far as our communications in 2021, um, super excited that we had roughly 250 requests uh, for our newsletter. And if you've not been able to, um, or have not, not receiving our newsletter, you'll be able to, I believe, um, ask for that in the website, Marta, and be able to get that sent to you. Uh, it will tell you what's going on. It'll tell you what we're doing, what we've done in the past, what we're focusing on and what's coming up. Super important for you to be uh, receiving that if you're not. Uh, we, with this newsletter, the requests that came out were, were coming from HOAs, uh, realtors, community members, uh, elected and appointed officials. We really are starting to uh, be noticed by our our elected and, and appointed officials, which is what we wanna do. We wanna get in front of the communities of those elected officials. <clears throat> our governing documents, documents, bylaws and policy. Um, we were fortunate enough this last year to uh, have a new policy manual. Um, I, I had the, the uh, um, daunting task of chairing that last year. And every time I thought we were done and the policy was completed, <laughs> we had something else come up. Um, it's super exciting to, to be a part of not only the policy manual and the updated bylaws uh, to, give us, to give us teeth, to let us know what we're doing and why we're doing it and, and keep us on the path that we need to be on. Uh, we're also excited that we're working on a strategic plan this year. We had a strategic plan in place, but because of where we are now, that, that strategic plan is, is outdated and we need to uh, have a refocus. So that is coming up in the very near future. Um, we will be updating the strategic, strategic plan this year. Um, our fundraising strategic plan. Uh, you'll see here that, that we have established goals and fundraising uh, funding streams, donor prospects plan. Um, we, we've, we have a fundraising plan that has been created. Uh, we've got a tiered, tiers created for outside donations. Uh, we understand that, that uh, we can't always be um, hoping and committing that, or, or being committed by CAR and NAR to continue to, to uh, support us, although we will continue to ask for that support. But we need to we need to go outside of those four walls. So we're excited that we've got other aspects and, and ways to be able to have our, our uh, fundraising uh, streams. We've hired a consultant that is going to assist us with this, and we're super excited about what she's doing right now. One of the things that we did last year and, and is solidifying in the, in the 2022 is we've initiated a summit. Um, very excited about this summit. And you'll see the save the date for May 12th and 13th in Long Beach. Uh, we're still working on, on the facility that we're going to be uh, uh, having this at, but we're getting really close. I would say we're days away from being able to have a commitment on, on what we're doing. Um, this summit is going to be dedicated to nothing but, but Coastal Commission, or not Coastal Commission, uh, Smart Coast uh, endeavors. Uh, we're going to be having panel discussions, and they're going to be included in cities and counties with LCPs, uh, soft and hard shoreline solutions. 
legal and, and economic impacts. One of the things that's not been discussed and Don has brought it up on, on various uh, um, occasions when we have meetings is one of the things that Coastal Commission and the local, the local communities are still not grabbing a hold of is the legal and economic factors of, of uh, the sea level rise and, and, and what they're trying to mandate. And they'll be the first ones to say that we haven't, we haven't started working on that. So that's going to be a big one for us to, to focus on for this coming year and, and the foreseeable future. Uh, we will have a keynote speak, speaker luncheon. And then also on the 12th, uh, we will be having a VIP reception. Uh, if you want more information on that, please reach out to us and, and uh, uh, let us know. We would love to have you all there. So uh, we're very excited about this. It's something that, that's been in the, the workings for probably a year and a half and uh, excited that this year we're going to be able to see this one come to pass. And this will be one of many, we hope. Our active fundraising, this is exciting for us and Otto alluded to this a little while ago. Um, it's, it's important for you all to understand that this last year, 2021, we had a grand total of grants given to us in the amount of over a million dollars. That is amazing for a, a, a group such as us, which is just getting started. Um, we had uh, $212,000 uh, of, of an NAR issues grant uh, that was given to us in 2021, 300,000 from CAR uh, in 2021. And then as Otto alluded to this last year, 495,000 uh, was given to us in December of 2021. One of the other things that we're really excited about is that we have um, the AORs contributing. Uh, it was spoken just a little while ago. We have all 29 associations have, have uh, um, decided to back us. They understand the, the importance uh, to, to their associations and, and having us be a part of that. So their contributions is amazing. Also, uh, one of the other things that we're very excited about is that we, for the first time, are getting direct contributions. So far, we have a total of $7,700 in contributions uh, since April of 2021. Um, one of the other things that we've talked about this last year that I'm very excited about and, and very much a believer in is that we need to have, and we've talked about this, so the board of directors are not going to be surprised when I bring this up. We need to have buy-in from our board, uh, which means contributions from our board. Very similar to those of you that are realtors understand the Realtor Action Fund and the, and the buy-in that, uh, uh, that's important for our business. Um, and it's just as important with the board that we have currently this year uh, to know or to show their support and understand the value that we have. So buy-in from the board is going to be extremely important this year. And uh, I thank you in advance to all the board members that are going to be um, supporting us. <clears throat> By the numbers, our 2021 accomplishments are amazing. Um, and you'll see the numbers here. I think we're going to, are we going to go into separate slides on, on most of these no. or not? No. Nope. So you, you can see what we've done in 2021. I'm not going to read through them all, uh, but you'll see the, the different avenues that we have uh, reached out and, and been a part of and, and been able to communicate with uh, different jurisdictions, um, elected officials, our presentations that we've made. The presentations have been super important. Um, Dawn has been amazing. Um, like Dawn said at, at, at our PISMO presentation that we had with the uh, um, uh, PISMO Coast Association of Realtors and, and my association um, sponsoring that. The, after the presentation was made, there were elected officials that were there that were truly impressed with some of our ideas and suggestions. And, and that's just the start. It, it, takes, it takes getting out, it takes getting Smart Coast uh, in, in every door and every avenue and, and every community that we can get into to, to let people know that we're, 
we're concerned about um, we're concerned about our coastline. Uh, we're also though concerned about the direction that the Coastal Commission is taking it. So um, not that we're we're against the Coastal Commission, but we're we're against the policies that they're trying to to place. And so it's important for us to get our our uh, directive out and let people know what we think. And we can only do that with all of you and your support. Next slide. One of the most important aspects of, of Smart Coast California, and it has been from the very beginning, is the support of the local association of realtors. Um, you'll see over on the left or on the right, the skin in the game contributions. Um, obviously, if an association were willing to give more, we would definitely take it. Um, but we, we have, like we've said, we've had buy-in from all 29 associations that are affected by the coast and the Coastal Commission have bought in and are supporting us. But it's important for those associations to realize that we're here for advocacy. Uh, we can't do the job for them. The, 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 the local associations need to be the ones that present at their community meetings, that present at their, their uh, supervisor's meetings, that present at their council committee, committee meetings. Because we could come in a Smart Coast California, but we're not the boots on the ground. We're not the ones that are there, that are initiating for our clients, for our community, and, and, and for the people that are in that community. So it's very important that the associations understand we're here to give them everything that they need, um, but it's up to them to take it and run with it. We, we can't do that job for them. Uh, and, and it's been exciting to see. I know our local association and a few of the other associations have been given uh, template letters where we were able to put our association um, um, insignia on the, on the letterhead and submit. It's very easy to do. And uh, we're here to support the associations in any way that we can. Um, and again, this year we are invoicing the, the associations from January of 2022. Next slide. Working with the community. Um, so important, and we've seen that in 2021, and, 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 and we expect that to be no different going into 2022. Uh, SCCA and the, the presentations that we make to different groups, speaking about, the smart, uh, about Smart Coast, speaking about our proposed plans and programs. Uh, we have a library of items that will help with advocacy that are available. The communities just need to ask about it. They need, and it's up to some of you to let your communities know who we are and what we have. Um, reach out to your communities, let them know about us, and let them know we're here. It, we honestly, we honestly will not turn down, well, maybe I shouldn't say we won't turn down, but we will probably not turn down any invitation to speak about Smart Coast and who we are and what we, what we are planning and what we want for our state and your local community. Um, again, down at the bottom, request participation at meetings. You guys are the ones that, that can give us the door, the foot in the door to be able to share who we are, what we are, and, and why it's important for us to be involved in their communities. Next slide. Our 2022 action items. Um, we talked about the, the, the continued tracking and advocacy. We, we, we want to track what's going on in each of the communities. We need, uh, we need you to, to let us know when issues are, are arising so that we can put it on our, on our agendas and, and, and be talking about it. Advocacy is huge. Um, we talked about the walking tour that's, that's been not canceled, but postponed. We were so excited to, to be able to, to, to take members out on a tour and, and, and see firsthand what we're talking about. Um, we were very excited that, that we had a number of elected officials that were that had been invited and and agreed to speak. Um, it was exciting. I think the mayor of Carmel. We had public public works people from Monterey 
who were committed to being a part of this. So it shows you who we are. It shows you that we are starting to get our name out and people are recognizing us. Um, the proposed organizational strat plan update, that will be taking place very soon. We have a consultant that has been hired and we're, we're just working through the, the timeframes on being able to update that plan. And uh, when that plan is updated, you'll, you'll be the first ones to know. Um, the Milliman consultant study phase, so, such an important part of, of who we are. Uh, the Milliman was recommended to us by uh, the National Association of Realtors. Uh, they are the ones that helped create and update the new uh, flood maps for FEMA. They have been hired by Smart Coast California as a consultant to combine and collect data for sea level rise on the coast and have that data be really coming from a third party, coming from uh, uh, somebody that, 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 that obviously if they've been hired by FEMA to, to redo their maps, um, they're going to be somebody that's going to be well respected. When that data is collected and given back to Smart Coast, we'll have something that is strategic in being able to show the Coastal Commission that maybe the data that they are using is a bit skewed. And, and, and we'll have third party data that was going to show that. We're excited for them. We're excited that, that they've committed to being a part of Smart Coast. And we're really looking forward to the data that is collected and, and what has been given to us when it's done. Um, again, active fundraising, uh, we talked about that. We're, we're excited again to, to have a consultant that is taking the lead on, on um, our fundraising. You all know that fundraising is a very difficult thing. And, and I, hate, I hate fundraising. I, I don't like to be the one that, is, that asks for money, but when we can hire a consultant that asks for it in a way that they don't know that they're being asked, that's, that's, that's a benefit. And that's what we've done and, and who we've hired. So we're excited about having her take the lead this year on our fundraising. Next slide. Our new fundraising tiers, we talked about it a little while ago. We're excited about this. And, and, and um, although these dollar amounts are specific to uh, the, the different tiers, the stakeholder partner, uh, $5,000, the advising partner of $10,000, and the founding partner at 25,000. We will obviously take more and we will obviously take less. But this gives us a, a, a tiered approach to, to the donations and the donors and the, the, the entities, the communities, um, the corporations that we're hoping to, to come together and be a part of Smart Coast and, and see the value. Uh, you'll see what, what is included in, in those tiered uh, uh, annual support. Um, the exciting thing about all of them is each one of them gives them a seat on an honorary board that we're going to talk about a little bit in, the, in a few minutes. We've, we've created an honorary board and an advisory board this year uh, to, to, to give us more uh, input, uh, to give to the directors more input. So we're very excited about these fundraising tiers. Um, please note these. And if you have people that you think, you know, they should be a part of Smart Coast. They should be a part of, of, of uh, uh, donating. Um, they, their, their corporation or their, their what, whoever they are is right in line with what we're doing. Have them get in touch with us so we can talk to them. We would really appreciate it. Next slide. I was just talking about the advisory and the honorary boards. Um, we're really excited about the advisory board and, and the, the newly formed honorary board. Uh, the advisory board uh, will be a, a non-binding strategic advice. Um, like I said, they will be able to give, give us updates to the, to the board of directors. Um, and and we're, we're using the advisory board at, because we've got so much um, interest in, in, in our board and becoming um, a board member. Uh, we're using the advisory board as a, also a way to, to allow people to kind of see what, what it takes to, to be a board member and sit on the advisory board. And if, um, 
if there's an interest in moving on, uh, they'll get to see kind of what how, how we operate and what goes on. The honorary board uh, are individuals who provide contributions and have an influence to the organization. Uh, development of board members and classifications. The honorary board is going to be very important. We're, we're, we're already identifying uh, people that we would like to be on that honorary board, um, ex officios, people that have been involved either with the Coastal Commission or different communities uh, who have seen and heard our presentation, who are excited about what we do and what we're doing and why we're doing it and want to get involved. And, and it's going to be important for us to have that honorary board, people that we can we can listen to and, and, and be able to communicate with. So we're very excited about these two. They're brand new this year. And um, uh, again, like I said, the, our board is very excited about what we've created here. Committee participation. Uh, another thing that we're very excited about this year, like I had mentioned earlier, uh, this group is made up of not only realtors, uh, but it's made up of stakeholders, uh, uh, private individuals, communities, uh, HOAs. For the first time, we are asking for committee participation for all stakeholders. Um, you'll see our, our um, different committees that we have right now, communications, finance, and policy. Um, you'll see the QR code there. If you're interested, please take a picture of this QR code and it'll give you all the information required and needed to uh, uh, put your name in and, and uh, become a part of one of these committees. I, I will say that, that being on one of the committees is sort of, it, it's, it's, it's good because it gives you firsthand knowledge of what's going on kind of behind the scenes of, of Smart Coast and gives you an idea of how we operate. So please be, be involved if you, if you want. Next slide. Again, we just talked about this a little while ago. Uh, please save the date. Smart Coast California Policy Summit. One California, one coast. Um, it, this is going to be this is going to be um, for Smart Coast. This is going to kind of be the 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 coming out party for us. Um, we will get noticed. There will be uh, community communities there being represented. Uh, there'll be. Uh, policy people, there'll be um, elected officials, uh, and they'll be coming to here and see what we have. And we're super excited about this. Um, again, we talked about the uh, VIP uh, reception the night before, um, and the, the day of May 13th is an all-day event, so be prepared to come. And if you haven't already, um, a, a variety of different ways to, to connect with us. Please take a moment and, and take pictures of, of the QR codes. Um, uh, the, the sign up, is the sign up, I believe, for the newsletter or is that for Marta? Yes, so the sign up is for the newsletter. Thank you. And then the QR code for community interest is those committees that you had discussed, Joe. Awesome. And then the website, take a look at the website. That website has been amazing. And uh, we've got a lot of new things coming this year with communication and, and, and trying to reach out and, and, and post a little bit more in social media, uh, being more proactive in, in social media um, and letting you all know what's going on, not only with Smart Coast, but up and down the coast with the different issues that the different communities are, are, are facing. So um, we, we just, I hope you can see how excited I am um, to be involved with Smart Coast this year and, and, and at the helm. Um, we are so grateful and thankful for, for all of your participation and continued support. We ask that you let everybody know about Smart Coast. One of the things I wanted to, to mention and Otto uh, touched on it a little bit was that the fact that NAR, National Association of Realtors, um, has recognized us and, and, and given us grant money um, is no small item. Um, and that can only happen 
because the California Association of Realtors has recognized who we are and, and has backed us. And, and so it's a win-win. We're so thankful for the California Association of Realtors and their continued support. We're, we're super excited uh, to see where we go with the National Association of Realtors. Uh, Otto alluded a little bit to the fact that there's already talk about this uh, Smart Coast being a, a, a national uh, uh, entity. Um, th that's kind of big picture, but, but it's definitely something that, that is on the horizon and, and, and we do talk about it. So um, I know that there's a lot of questions that I've seen in chat. Um, do we want to take those? Sure. Would you, would you like to, would you like to um, have Drew speak first or after sure. the question? Uh, absolutely. Josh? He's had his hand up for quite a while. Yeah. Sorry, Sorry Drew. Oh, no, no worries, Joe. Hey, I'm going to fire off an email. So I'm on the homeowner side and I think the timing is perfect. We have a little joke here. We like to say that the Coastal Commission is very in. They're indomitable, implacable, intractable, indefatigable. And this war is on. I agree with what you're saying. From the homeowner's perspective, Joe, you are the tip of the spear. And we're ready to be recruits in your army. And I would say that the, the, the coral reef model is genius, man. Look, there are 100,000 of little tiny coral polyp homeowners out here. And we're looking to accrete ourselves to a big, strong, powerful reef like yours. We are tied to ECHO, which is the um, California Homeowners Group. So I'm going to fire up an email, Joe, and, and I would set a challenge for you and your organization to which we are certainly willing to roll our sleeves. Let's see if we can form whatever homeowners auxiliary to your group so we can kick it off at that May meeting. Um, I think we can get you money. I'm certain we can get you a lot of political um, support. But most important, I agree with what you're saying, Joe, the most important thing we need to do is reach, look, we have, we, I am on an HOA board with 500 homeowners. I mean, we're organized, right? But God, Joe, like you say, just think of all those poor souls that have one house out there. And the most important thing you can do, we can do, is to help them have a voice, show them they can affiliate with a group that will give them um, that voice and some protection. So, Joe, hands off to, your, to what you guys have done. It's genius. I think you are the tip of the spear, and we're ready to join you. Again, just 500 homes, but I'll bet there's hundreds of thousands of us that would join. Awesome. So thank you so much. Thank, thank, thank you so much, Drew. And we truly appreciate your support. And we will, we will get together after this meeting and prior to our, our um, symposium. Uh, you know, and you touched on something that Steve Hanley brings up a lot. And that is the fact that, that you know, for me, I, I, I live in Cambria. Um, I've got vested interest in this. So I, I have a house where I get to get up in the morning and have a cup of coffee and, and look out and see the ocean and sit at my bar at night and have a cocktail and look at the sunset. Um, but there are a lot of people that own homes here that live in Bakersfield and Fresno, and they don't know what's going on. So it's important for us to be able, like you said, that one homeowner, that one person to get this out. So it's up to us and we're taking the charge. Thank you for noticing that, Drew. Um, okay, so we're gonna kind of go through the comments, the questions, um, get this party started on, cause you know, we haven't been partying enough with all this information being <laughs> sent out to you. Um, uh, this is a great idea. Would a coastal protection bond measure facilitate reef and other projects to protect homes? Um, I don't think we've actually thought of that. Um, <laughs> there's, there's a lot of different ideas and this is why we love these stakeholder meetings because they can bring these ideas to the forefront. We are definitely going to start percolating on this idea and seeing where this could go, if anywhere. And um, who knows, maybe we'll see this idea turn into a, an actual real, real life thing. Um, from Judy, um, some more had uh, more praise for us, which we love, Judy. Thank you. Please forgive my interruption. We have had 50 years of learned helplessness with the Coastal Commission, and it is really good news that the memo is getting out that it can't keep doing things the way it has. This is such good news. 
And I think that that's what Smart Coast is trying to do. We're trying to change the way that business is actually done with the Coastal Commission and create that opening conversation between the locals and the Coastal Commission. It can't be just a dictatorship anymore that you will do it this way, the end. It is no, per the Coastal Act, you actually have to work with the local jurisdictions and realize that they have a say in what goes on in their own communities also. So thank you, Judy. Um, fiscal responsibility is an excellent topic. With California surpluses, what they are, can we put pressure on our local county cities to press the state on their responsibility to protect? I would also like to see a path forward to the reefs, which seem to be a fabulous answer to many areas with the problem. What are the first steps to the last where communities have been successful? I would say that's probably a bigger answer than what we can give right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> insofar as I, I really can't, I can't explain, and I don't think Marta can right now. We have not, we don't have the, from the very beginning to the very end of like the life of a reef, of how it's created, um, what's the different policies that it has to go through, the loopholes, things like that. but. We are definitely, we're going to be getting that information together um, so that we can kind of start putting that out there and having having that information. And I, I agree, it would be great to be able to have the state put use some of the surplus in order to um, use it along the coast, say, for coastal reefs and so forth. Um, just to, to put a little, little bit of reality though on this is that with, the, with a super majority of Democrats out there, I don't see that happening. <laughs> um, they, they are more into a lot of other programs that they want to use that surplus for. And, um, while they want to protect the coast, I don't think that it's high priority for them to spend money. So their their money is not where their, or what is it? Money is not where their mouth is. Is that the saying? <laughs> but Marta, if you have like a little, no? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so on the HOA front, again, we are working with ECHO, the Educational Community for Homeowners. It's a nonprofit membership corporation dedicated to assisting California homeowner associations. Our mission is serving community associations. We provide help to homeowner associations on many fronts, finances, legal issues, insurance, maintenance, and management. Members receive guidance through live webinars, virtual seminars, and workshops, a bi-monthly full-color magazine, and ECHO Insight on our e-newsletter. E um, there's certainly a chance for symbiosis here. Um, I agree, that would be fantastic and let's get those conversations going and we're more than happy to do a presentation and to chat. Anyone who would like a presentation, contact us. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're looking at our calendars and we'd love to be able to come out and explain Smart Coast, our policies, how we can help things of that nature. How could the Coast Commission oppose the seawall for Ocean Harbor House in Monterey when that con condo complex was built in 1968? Good question. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't know what the project is. Um, Don is not here because he had to pop on to another meeting. My guess would be have to deal with modifications that have happened since then, um, as well as what available science there is, but I, I'm just kind of taking a shot in the dark on that one, and we're not sure, but we can um, kind of look into it a little bit more. It's definitely something that's on our radar for 2022, um, so appreciate the question and the comment, and we are definitely looking at community seawalls and different types of um, ways to protect those shoreline areas. Has there been a review of the report uh, on the Coastal Commission website, protection public, protection public trust shoreline resources in the face of sea level rise by Charles Lester? Yes, <laughs> there has. Um, we actually, Smart Coast did submit a letter to the Coastal Commission on this. 
I cannot recall off the top of my head what we said (laughs) because we've written quite a few letters. I believe, though, that we um, we basically stated while we appreciate um, Dr. Lester's uh, review of this, that we don't believe that it's all true and all doom and gloom and that there's a lot of alternatives out there besides just a straight managed retreat approach. And um, that we need to look at all all dimensions of this issue. What firms do feasibility analysis for artificial reefs? Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, we'll have to work with our consultant to find that yeah. out. Yeah, that's the last one. And we can get back to folks, especially if you put your email or your, well, we have your contact through our uh, sign up form uh, on the website. So we can get back to you as long as your name is connected with the, the question. Yes. Um, what involvement is Smart Coast planning for Cal Cities and the counties in regards to their follow up on the coastal sea level rise local government working group recommendations? We are in contact with the various members of these subcommittees within Cal Cities as well as CSAC. Um, we we were actually, and thank you, Judy, we actually were up at the Cal Cities Expo or at their conference back in whenever that was, September, I want to say. Um, and we had a booth at the Expo. We talked to many people. It was uh, very, very good, very receptive. And we have also been talking to CSAC and with their committees and, and their members. And they they are rallying, I'm going to say rallying behind us, but what it is, is we're rallying together. We're giving them information that they didn't have before. And as Dawn and others have mentioned before, we're really becoming that conduit between locals and between the Coastal Commission and letting them realize and letting them know there's other options out there. There's a lot more information out there than what the Coastal Commission is sharing, and we're here to help with that. So we we are definitely working on that um, on on that front, and we need more realtors to serve on their local city councils and planning commissions. Yes, get out there, <laughs> campaign <laughs> on many issues. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, I think that we kind of touched on this with the huge state budget surplus. Can we ask for money for coastal protection? I kind of wish we had this meeting about a month ago and got some of these fantastic ideas because the budget is already pretty much there. They are already setting it up in Sacramento. And um, so I'm not sure if we'd be able well, we can work long-term issues. There, those yeah. are long-term yeah. issues that we can yeah. work on. Yeah. And I want to address the one from the policy committee, policy forum from yesterday. I'm very excited that we have somebody who's on the policy forum and asking this question here. The question is, how is the risk uh, to insurance costs and failure liability being explored? Uh, yesterday's public policy forum could very well have included the effects of sea level rise. I'm really excited to tell you that Nancy Watkins, who was on that forum, is our consultant, and we recommended her to CAR for that very policy uh, demonstration. And she's leading the team at Milliman on behalf of Smart Coast California. So it's definitely all part of the conversation and the discussion. So I'm very excited that you guys put those together, but she is our lead consultant on that side of the house. So Kudos, thank you. And Joe, that ends the question section, unless anybody else has anything else. Awesome. All right. Well, we're getting done a little ahead of schedule, which is always good. Um, Again, um, from from all of us um, at Smart Coast, thank you for your support. Thank you for your time here today. Um, we are always available. Um, we're, we're, all, we're here for questions. We're here for comments. Um, it, 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 with what we're building, um, there's, there's not a, a, 
a wrong question and 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 it helps us and it helps us to continue to be uh, more proactive and it helps us to be out in front uh, of all the issues that we're all facing. So we just want to thank you all for being here, uh, for your commitment, both uh, financially and, and time. Um, we know that you are all busy and, and have busy schedules. So the fact that you took time to be here shows the importance of what we're doing. So we want to thank you for that. Kudos to you all for being here. Uh, go out and make it a great day today. And uh, if you ever need anything from Smart Coast, you know how to get a hold of us. Please, please reach out to us. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. 2022. Woohoo! Yeah. Thank you, everyone. That was great. Thank you. It was great. I love what you're doing. Thank, Thank you. you.